Hallelujah. He's my rock. On a solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's my rock on a solid rock. Hallelujah. Can we sing that together? He's my rock. He's my rock on a solid rock. I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. I don't want to stand nowhere else but you and you, God. On a solid rock. Your love is solid. I love you so much, God. He's my rock. On a solid rock. I don't want to stand by nobody else. You got my back, God. He's my rock on a Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is my rock on a solid rock. I stand. This morning's uh, chapter is uh, 2 Samuel 22. One through four, if you can go with me now. Second Samuel 22, two, one through four. Oh, I'm sorry, Children's Church. Children's Church can be dismissed. Follow uh, Miss Hannah. Maida will be leading the children down to Children's Church. Hallelujah. David sang to the Lord the words of this song. When the Lord delivered him from the hands of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul, he said, The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. From violent people, you save me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The Lord is my rock. Hallelujah. The Lord is my rock. This book was written by Samuel and some addition pro- additional prophets, Gad and Nathan, who together are three prophets who had appeared within the first chronicles during the account of David's reign. This book speaks about David's anointing and reign as king of Israel. David is remembered as the greatest king in Israel's history. The Lord blessed And honored David. According to 1 Samuel 17, Goliath, a heavily armed Philistine giant, challenged Saul for 40 days to send out a man to fight him. Now, Saul should have stepped out, but he refused to do so. So, Saul was over six feet and the obvious challenger for Goliath but he was afraid. David 
who was Saul's minister of music, I call him, an armor barrier, definitely to the eye was not a match for Goliath. Can you imagine a man coming in here right now, a giant man, and he's saying, I want to fight your best warrior in the church. And lo and behold, Maria jumps out. Now, we know Tony ain't having that. And we know that some men in our church and women, hallelujah, ain't having that. But that's how God works. He is not looking for the size of the person or the muscle or the smack that a person has taught. He's looking at our hearts. And God saw this young musician's heart and used him to slay Goliath. What are some of our Goliaths? And who is God been to us? As I studied, and God was ready in me for this sermon, I was not ready for some of the things that God has shown me. I was not ready for some of the things that God had taught me. My first point, God prepares us. God prepares us. First Samuel 16, God told Samuel, stop crying about Saul. I rejected him as king over Israel. So fill your horn with oil and get to stepping. God sent Samuel to Jesse of Bethlehem because God had chosen one of Jesse's sons to be the king. Samuel was in fear that Saul would kill him. So God told him, take a heifer with you as a sacrifice. God also said to Jesse, said to Samuel, take Jesse with you to sa as a sacri and sacrifice and I'll show you everything else you need to know. So he said, take a heifer with you as a sacrifice and take Jesse too and I'll show you what to do. Now, when I saw this little part, I said, ooh, take a heifer. Oh, God is, woo. He 20th century. Because a heifer definitely going to get Saul's attention. So this is what I'm saying. I learned a whole lot in this, in this here. I don't know why God picked me because I'm like, what? And then when I found out what a heifer was, because I thought that a heifer was a woman. Matter of fact, a, a, a woman prostitute. Because my grandma used to always say, help her, help her, help her get in here. So I didn't know that, hey, but I'm going to tell y'all something. I, I learned today that a helper is a cow. My grandma was calling me a cow. A cow who hadn't had no kids yet. So that's a helper. So if there's anybody out here online who doesn't know what a helper is, that's what a helper is. God taught me in this word. Hallelujah, somebody. Now I know. I appreciate you, Wanda, when you stand up and say them words, you define them. Because some of us don't know. Hallelujah. So here is God setting the stage for David, the son of Jesse, to become king. Now, how is God setting the stage for us? How is God preparing us? Does anybody know the nickname for the street that we reside on here uh, at Peace Baptist? Does anybody know the nickname besides me, the nickname for Rockdale? Who says something? What they say? That's what it is. The nickname for Rockdale, and it's been the nickname for as long as I've been out here, when I was out there, the rock. And when God started doing a work in me, he sent me here. Now, this is the very street and the neighborhood 
that I hung out in, did all my bad stuff in, and every addict knows, every recovering addict knows that you don't go to old places and old things because it's definitely not good for you. So they tell you, stay away from old places and old things if you want to maintain abstinence from drugs. So why would God call me back to the neighborhood that had me bound? I know why. Because he is my rock. And his plan was different than AA and NA. Now, I'm not saying that AA and NA don't work. It just didn't work for me. Hallelujah. It works for some, but maybe not for others. So he was preparing me. Matthew 16, 18 says, upon this rock, I will build my church and nobody can prevail against it. We know that we are the church, right? And this is where he has brought all of us together. Hallelujah. Because he is preparing us because it's going to be some more bridges coming up in here. I know y'all are like, oh, Lord, don't say that. But there's some more bridges coming and worse. So God is preparing us upon this rock because he is our rock. Through our tests and our trials, we feel like these are are, our setbacks. But they really set us for God to do what it is that he needs to do in us. Our future tests are really from our earlier tests. See, things that we're going through right now, we already, we already done had victory over it. Hallelujah. We just sometimes forget what God has brought us from and what he's brought us through. Think about it. When you look up, uh, back over your life, just like David, we've had some giant situations in our lives. Victorious because great is God's faithfulness. We always wind up victorious over big stuff in our lives. It's important for us not to forget our victories. Y'all remember how God made Israel victory over and over and over and over. And they forgot where they came from. And they failure was the result. David didn't forget where he came from. God is preparing us. We cannot forget all the victories that God has brought us through because they are for future battles, for future giants. Hallelujah. So he's just readying us now for what's to come. My second point, God protects us. God protects us. Second Samuel three and four, the Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold my refuge, my savior from violent people. You saved me. Wow. The horn of my salvation describes God in the Old Testament and Jesus in the New. Horns uh, were symbolic back then for strength, often used as metaphors for kings and rulers. So y'all remember when the kings came out, the horns, dun, 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 dun. yeah, we need to do that every time Jesus show up. Dun, 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 dun. Hallelujah. And that's how much David loved God. Blow the horn, not the whistle. Hallelujah. When Jesus show up, we need to be dun, 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 dun. God. Now, We know that Saul appointed David leader over the armies and later became jealous and angry at David's success and wanted David dead. 
So David fled, and God had, had him covered. That's why it's important for us to move when God say move, because he wants to protect us. But if you're not listening to his voice or in relationship with him, you operating in your own strength, you ain't going to make it probably. Matter of fact, I know you're not going to make it. Somebody probably saying, what you mean I ain't going to make it? I don't listen to God. God oftentimes will use relationships as form of protection. And God may say, go see the pastor. Go talk to the pastor. Or go up for prayer and, 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 and be prayed for. And you saying, well, I don't want everybody in my business. Because everybody, every time I go up there, somebody, oh, what bridge are going through? <laughs> That's being hard head. If God is saying, get out the seat, go get prayed for. Get out your seat and go get prayed for. God used relationships to protect David. Watch this. God used Jonathan to protect David by giving him good advice. As children of God, we need friends that's going to counsel us through scripture. When troubles come, that's why uh, uh, I struggled a lot in my life, because when troubles came, I I was going to either knock you out or be knocked out. But God used y'all to show me an easier and softer way. Hallelujah. God used people, my family, to show me an easier and softer way. Because God was protecting me, keeping me out of jail or worse. Because in my mind, I still got it. (laughs) Oh, God. Another way God protected David was through his first wife, Micah. Now, we know David was a player, but she still honored David. She could have sided with her father, Saul, against David and easily delivered him on a silver platter. But no, she stood by her man and helped him escape. Good men will allow their wives to help them Become better men. I just threw that out there, God. I know that. Good men will allow their wives to help them be better men. Now, God ain't tell me to say that, but I just threw that out there. Y'all heard that? They say on the side of every good man is a good woman. They say on behind, I say on the side. God also used Samuel, who was a spiritual leader, and also the one who anointed David as future king. We need people in our lives who are going to keep it real and tell us the hard truth. And Samuel was the one who could provide what Micah or Jonathan could not. We definitely need people in our lives who are going to tell you what you don't want to hear. We don't need people shaking their head. You know what I mean? And they shaking their head. You know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. And take them to the word of God so they can understand what God is doing in their lives and how God will protect them. David also had the Holy Spirit who heard his cry. David cried out to God to protect him, and God would show up in seen and unseen ways. Ephesians 6:12 say we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places For example somebody getting on your nerves and your thoughts is if they say one more word I'm explode Cuz it's hard for us to remember that the real adversary adversary is not the person It's the enemy. And the enemy is spiritual. Just like David cries were heard, ours are heard as well. 
God has been protecting us since the beginning. Now, I'm not a scientist, but I know that we are like the third planet from the sun. You got Venus, you got Mars, then Earth. Now, it might not be in that order. Like I said, I'm not a scientist. But my point is, he has us close, but not too close, where we'll get burnt. Hallelujah. Somebody going to catch that on Tuesday. It's Venus, Mars, and Earth. It keeps us close, but not so close that we'll be burnt up. Hallelujah. That was a shout moment for me. Like, oh, God, you the bomb. Oh, God, you so wonderful. Hallelujah. My third point. God promotes. When God calls us for special works, he will make the way clear. God has access to every heart. Even your enemies can wind up being your help. Hallelujah. It is said that David was a man after God's own heart. When Saul became king, God quickly peeped what Saul had going on in his heart. Saul and his army was about to go to battle against the Philistines, and Saul wanted God's blessings to be with him. So God told him, wait seven days for prophet Samuel to arrive, Samuel 13, 1 through 9, and Saul was impatient and decided, I'm going to present my burnt offering unto the Lord himself. When Samuel showed up, he asked Saul, what did you do? And he responded, I felt compelled to offer up my burnt offerings. From the beginning, Saul had his own agenda. And his agenda got David the promotion. Hallelujah. Because had Saul did what he was supposed to do and what God told him to do, he would have been promoted. He would have got the hookup. God sought out a man after his own heart. Do we ignore God's commands, hindering our promotions? God says go right and we go left. God says wait and we go anyway. God says love them and you hate on them. God says give and we take. God says no and we say yeah. We know David did some stuff in his life. Hallelujah. He was a murderer an adulterer, and God still prepared, protected, and promoted David. And he's going to do the same for us. We just have to care about what God cares about. This is what Saul lacked, John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Anybody in here ever broke God's commandments? Oh, I was going to say, everybody's hand better be up. Because God can just scoot over if you didn't. Hallelujah. Saul wanted the praise of men. David wanted the praise of God. Because he is our rock. Meaning, our strength. Unbreakable. Enduring and lasting. Our refresher. Our restorer. Our deliverer. It all worked how God had planned it because Saul later became a changed man. Hallelujah. And God forgave that. We know he killed a lot of men. He did a lot of bad stuff. But God forgave it. God was preparing the situation. God protected the situation. We later see Saul about God's business. And for real, for real, I really couldn't even never imagine that God would bring Saul to Paul to make him what he is today. When I think back over my life and all that I've done, I'm I'm shocked about me too. Hallelujah. I know some of y'all shocked about y'all too. Hallelujah. Somebody prayed for us. Hallelujah. Our grandmamas and great grandmamas and stuff, they was praying for our success. Hallelujah. Saul was such a mean person. 
And God loved him still. Hallelujah. This gives me hope that when I fall short, God still going to prepare, protect, and promote me. Hallelujah. If you are here today and you want God to prepare, protect, and promote you, then you probably need to come up here for prayer. You probably need to ask God, what can I do, God, to hear your voice? What am I listening for, God? How can I be, God, a part of your army, God? I didn't know how to pray when I first got here. From uh, off the rock, hallelujah. I didn't know how to hear God's voice or what I was even listening for. I used to hear people say, God told me this and God told me that. And I, I wanted to know and uh, uh, how was God telling them and, and how was God going to tell me? Hallelujah. We have leaders who are in place to help you be protected, to help you get prepared and to help you be promoted. Hallelujah. Question, Lord. Lord, why so much pain? But God knows what's best for me. Although my weary eyes, they can't see. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I won't complain Cause God's been good to me He's been so good to me More than this whole world Or you could ever be He's been good so good to me he dried he dried he dried all my tears away turned my midnights today so i'm just saying thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord Has he been good? He's been good. 
good to me more than this whole world could ever be he's been good so good so good to me he tried he tried he tried all my tears away he turned my midnights today so I'm just saying thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord I I won't complain hallelujah It is so fitting that Peace Baptist is on a road named The Rock. It is fitting because we know that Jesus is our rock. He's our solid foundation. And when God led us to this spot, he knew that this was going to be a place, a church, that's going to be built on solid foundation. It's not going to be built on sand where it can shift. We've been in this spot since 1980. 1980. That says a lot. That with everything going on in Avondale, everything going on on this street, that he has protected us. He has, has, has promoted us. And he has prepared us to continue to go out and share Jesus Christ with others. He is our rock. Thank you, Minister Bridget, for sharing that with us and showing us that the only one that we can depend on is that solid rock which is Jesus Christ thank you thank you thank you I just want one announcement I know uh, Sister Diane mentioned this earlier but next week next week immediate, immediately after worship service we will have a business meeting a business meeting next week January 28th immediately after uh, worship service. So if you're watching on Facebook and we would love to have you here to discuss the business of Peace Baptist going into 2024. All right. May we all stand. Once again, I want to thank you again. Welcome to 2024. Happy New Year. I know this is the third week, but until we got January, I continue to wish you a happy new year. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Father, we just thank you. We thank you for everything that you have done, that you're doing, that you're going to do for each and every one of us, and also for us as a church, Father. Father, we thank you for your son Jesus being that solid rock in which we can stand firm on, Father. Father, as we continue to go throughout this week, Father, we, 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 we pray that uh, you just uh, continue just to protect us as we know that you can and, and, and that you will, Father. Father, you have prepared us to continue just to live out the commands that you have uh, uh, demanded for us, Father. Father, promote us. Allow us to just show others that when they see us and hear us, that they know that we are children of you father we're brothers and sisters of your son jesus christ father bless us keep us make your face shine upon us father father be gracious to us and give us the peace that surpasses all understanding and it's in your son jesus christ that we pray and we love and we obey amen 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 god bless god bless